In the early 90s, visual effects and CGI were quickly becoming a necessity to the film industry. VFX has always and will always be at the cutting edge, pushing the limits of hardware and software to make the impossible a reality. But what was cutting edge in the 90s was done on computers with less power than your smartphone. This is why it's so surprising to find VFX from that era that are still actually pretty good. Although a lot of miniature models and landscapes were built and used in this movie, a surprising amount of VFX were too. One of the most iconic scenes was the X-ray scene. The original idea was to do a motion capture, so Arnold acted out the scene wearing 24 light-reflecting balls, whilst six different black-and-white video cameras captured the movement. Weeks later, it was discovered that this wasn't enough to get the perfect motion, but luckily they had filmed the scene from the other side of the scene for reference and were able to rotoscope Arnold's performance, flip it and match the motion of their CG skeleton to it. T-1000 was a masterpiece that still looks remarkable, even by today's standards. ILM was in charge of the liquid metal T-1000, and in order to reduce pressure on them, wherever possible, T-1000 shots were done practically. For the helicopter pilot reaction shot, a chrome bust was used and raised into frame by hand. Quick shots in the fight against Arnold in the steel mill were done by a stuntman in a foil suit, and the reforming of the T-1000 was done by blowing mercury with a hairdryer. ILM's main task was T-1000's morphing abilities, and each shot, even though only around five seconds of screen time, would take eight weeks to complete. ILM pushed the limits of their computer's memory and CPUs, and it took a team of around 300 people six months to produce 50 shots. Meryl wearing a blue suit performing in front of a blue screen. The blue hood was digitally removed from the first plate and replaced with the corresponding area of the backwards body. Finally, they modelled a CG twisted neck asset that they match moved into place between the head and body. This was done using soft image 3D animation software and custom ILM software. Of course,
course, Jurassic Park had to be in this video, not only because it was a game changer that shaped the future of VFX, but it also stood the test of time. Ironically, Spielberg wasn't originally planning to use any major CGI in the film. He hired stop-motion expert Phil Tippett to create stop-motion test sequences for the Velociraptor kitchen fight scene and the T-Rex truck attack scene, and was planning for ILM to add motion blur to make the sequence appear more realistic. ILM told Spielberg that they could actually create and render the dinosaurs completely digitally, and when Spielberg saw the difference between the two, he chose CGI. It may not be a film you'd think of as having many VFX, but as we often say, the best VFX are the ones where you don't see VFX. The falling feather, erasing Lieutenant Dan's legs, war scenes and napalm in Vietnam, Gump shaking hands with Nixon, Kennedy and Johnson. A CG ping pong ball and creating crowds in the National Mall and the Alabama football stadium. In fact, apart from lip movements done on JFK, Nixon, John Lennon and Lyndon B. Johnson, most of the VFX go completely unnoticed. In Forrest Gump, VFX stopped just being used for what couldn't be done with practical effects and started to be used in preference of practical effects. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video, don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description, and be sure to let us know in the comments section which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.